The fun bit is the prediction. The fun bit is the getting the answer with confidence, OK? Isaac and Noom, Mr Number Vater, was invited into Mount Pleasant Lane School to take a Year 6 class in Algebra. Let's shake hands. How many hands can two people make? One, OK? Right. If there's three people, how many handshakes can three people make? Isaac, we asked you to do a lesson on algebra. How did you think that the handshake problem addressed the issues? What I was looking at was this idea of pattern spotting and the fact that the children were able to sort of record their, record their observations and then actually identify the pattern, explain the pattern and talk about the pattern. And so that was my way into the actual session and lesson itself. Four people, how many hands? Eight. How many handshakes? Six. Right. Look at what I've written on the board. Can anyone have a little think? We know this column here. We know that we're doubling because this boy here said so we're going to times it by two because of the number of hands. But look at this column here. Can anyone see what is happening here? It's adding one, then adding two, and then adding three. Right, so Sammy then, can you tell me if I have got five people, how many hands will there be? The number of handshakes will be how much then? Ten. How do you know it's going to be ten? Um, well, because you've added one, then you add two, then you add three, but so you must add four on to six, which will make ten. So, yeah. Right, excellent answer. Well done. The problem is I need to know how many handshakes will ten people make and fifteen and twenty. I love their different methods of recording. If you notice, some of the, particularly the girls, were perfectly neat in their mm. recording. And the boys who grasped the pattern spotting immediately simply wrote the answers and simply wrote the list as yes. it went through yes. to get it. But what interested me most was the young boy who thought he came up with a generalisation that he could double the pattern. Yes. And I found that fascinating and I particularly loved the way you handled that. Once I got to 20, I just doubled it to 40 then double the 40 to 80. Right, so do you think we're just doubling all the time? Mmm, sometimes. Right, how did, what was the answer for f number five? Five people, how many handshakes? Um, five and ten. Right, so if I double the answer for five, yeah. is that, what's your answer there for ten? Um, oh. So it's not doubling, is it? No. No, but, you, no, but listen, you had an idea, yeah. we tested it out, it didn't work, so now you can move on again independently, can't you? Yeah. And he didn't feel that he was wrong. He, he, he didn't feel that he, that he, that he was made a mistake or someone was going to look at him. He just knew automatically they had to go back and revise his answer. And that's the sort of thing I want to encourage within the class, that the children are aware that they are allowed to make mistakes because right. they will learn from those mistakes. Right. And it's the children that made the mistakes that were determined to go on and succeed. The other thing I noticed was that the children were all incredibly quick at observing the pattern and then repeating the pattern on their whiteboards. But you stopped them at one stage because in order to get them to think algebraically you were wanting them to go to the next level and that's when you brought them out to the front and yes. used them physically to get the task of the observation that if there were six of them right. the pattern would go five plus four plus three plus two plus one and that generated something which was really exciting do you remember that david yes yeah, the one that said Oh, it's minus one. Fantastic. Ah, yes. And he took one step towards algebra. Yes. Well, since you've already, like, you've missing one child, yes. he won't count himself, so every time he'll go around, he'll be missing, like, himself, so, so, each, so that we're each time it'll go minus one. It's always going to be minus one. So yeah. minus one is coming to this, so it's always going to yeah. be minus one. We're looking at, we're looking at number, we're looking at algebra, and when you mentioned minus one to me, this is what comes into a natural equation, OK? It comes into algebra. You are talking in terms of representing numbers with people and people with numbers. As a Year 6 teacher, David, do you find teaching algebra tricky? Um, I think there are those at the top of the group who will find it great. They love it. They, they enjoy it. They want to get involved. They know it's the next step for them. And there are those that towards the middle and the lower end of the group who find it really tricky to grasp the idea. But I think by applying it to this idea of a pattern, yeah. then they will be able to think to themselves, okay, it's not just 
n we're putting in, we're putting in n because we don't know what number it is, and if we applied it to this pattern each time, we could find the answer in every occasion. I think they will link the two in much better now. So I think that there's quite a bit of work that needs doing on certainly the empty box bit of yes. much lower down the school so they get used to that so that they're not always going to know a quantity. So once you've progressed them from the empty box, the spotting of patterns, the coming up with predictions, the generalisations, yeah. the moving into the function machine where they're giving you a rule and once they can spot the rule that's happening, yeah. then I think we're on the way to making algebra easier for children to, to grasp. Definitely. Thank you.